Welcome to part 34 of the Final Fantasy VI Let's Play, ladies Was that the for Charlie's Angels screenshot kind of yep. thing? that was for Charlie's Angels screenshot sort of thing, Matt. <laughs> Glad you were able to see right past that. <laughs> I got my Charlie's Angels with me. They're not all together, but they're all leading their own respective teams. Fuck yeah. Alright, so welcome to, uh, I guess, part two of the Dragon's Den Chronicles, folks. No, wait, Dragon's Den. Saga. Maybe something alliterative with the letter D. And that now we're in a castle. for Journey. Dragon's Den, Den Destination. Dragon's Den Destin. Yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Dino Zombie is also a new encounter for the Dragon's Den, besides its garish red color. <laughs> Nothing special. I think it has an attack that can make you a zombie, which shouldn't be a problem because we have ribbons at this point. Seven Little Fires will give it a Faraga. Go Go Shall Mimic. And that's all Hey, I could do folks. that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I could do. So is level 3 confused really good if most of the enemies are like level 99 or something? I suppose so. I don't think there's any enemy in this game that ever reaches level 99. I think the cap they ever get to is 97. Oh boy, turtles in water. I guess the dragon here will be the blue dragon? Uh, yeah, we have a new dragon on the top of this little area right here. There's also one to the right. But we're not getting him to like, I think that's the last dragon we encounter for this place. But we have to flick a switch here for some reason. We don't know why, because the red dragon is behind a locked door. Why? I, was I, he a bad dragon? Yeah, <laughs> he was on timeout. <laughs> <laughs> bad red dragon. Now I'm going to lock you behind this wooden door. Now don't break this wooden door now. <laughs> and don't you burn it, mister, or else yeah. it's no fire breathing for Don't you go sacrificing life force to break this door down. <laughs> that would be stupid if he did. Yeah. <laughs> he breaks the door down and his life expired. <laughs> Fuck, why did I do that? What is this door made of? <laughs> so I see a blue dragon right there. Yeah, and it is actually a blue dragon. You know, unlike uh, the earth dragon, which was red, and the storm dragon, which was, like, dark. Like a, like a fucking, I don't know, turquoise. Mm. I don't fucking know. <sighs> now it's there. Yeah, there's another thing. I'm also uh, move, uh, rearranging around a lot of Celestriads and Soul of Tamaza because, well, you know, I only have one of the Soul of Tamaza to go around, and I like to make sure all of my mages are properly equipped. By the way, off screen, while I was uh, gr uh, grinding some dragons. Ripple on Shadow! No! Oh, shit, there goes the Scepter! Well, actually, we're, not, we're playing the advanced version, so I don't have to worry about that. Oh. But so yeah. basically, red dragons, blue dragons, gimmick is to nerf its own one of its own statuses here, then use Rippler to change it. Yeah, that's boring. That's it, though. Still weak to uh, thunder, still and it still can't do anything thunder. outside of water. Yeah. So, so if you can eat water, you're good. Yeah. Read cloaks. Not to mention, quite frankly, if that's the best he's gonna do, so fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he's so easy to reach. Because, you know, it's not a, really a challenge. A Dirt. good idea that Johnny admittedly could have done if he had the extra money on him is buy, like, a couple, quite a few of those elemental swords just for Shadow to throw at them. Oh, like the Thunderblades? Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely do that. If you have the money, that is. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not using them anymore. So throw them for max damage on the Blue Dragon. Does it get a move on? Though, not for nothing, the Fuma Shurikens are also a really good throwing tool. You can you can now buy those as well. Fuck oh, right. Uh, I believe you can get them at the Maza. The best throwing stars are the tack stars. Uh, they're called pinwheels in the advanced translation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fun for hours. It also makes a good throwing weapon. The first time I ever saw... I still have the image of Seven's pinwheel weapon. I was like, what the fuck you want me to do with this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. Hurts what, the yeah. dead? <laughs> <laughs> it hurts my sides. Suck on my joy! <laughs> it hurts my sides. Because I'm laughing so much. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I got Blue Dragon. Down and dead. I don't even know what this thing drops. Uh, this thing right here? Oh, we're gonna find out momentarily. You know, I just recorded this and you think I memorized all this shit by heart. No, I think it's to save the queen. For Celeste. For Celeste? Yeah, there we go. Save Would that be queen. one of the few weapons that don't suck? Yeah, it actually is not a bad sword for Celeste. In fact, I think I'm going to equip it, if not now, then definitely later. But do yourself a favor and get that shit on Celeste. What does Save the Queen do? Save the, It's just a good stat buffs all around uh, hmm. for the sword. It's like Lightbringer. Minus. <laughs> that's, not, that's, not, that's pretty sweet. Any yeah, it's not, it, it's not bad. And again, the ultimate weapons are more worth it if you didn't go out of your way for Lightbringers. I only went out of my way for one. 
uh, because I figured I'd show off how to get the best sword in the game at least one time. Right. You, again, the advanced translation, you can get them as many as you want, as long as you're willing to steal from a uh, lady. Or do want you? So, now that we've broken the seal of water, what do we do with that? Yikes. Yeah, you, the, the ultimate reason why you're fighting all the eight dragons is so you can continue exploring more of the dragon's den. On your first trip, you're going to see all these glimmering stars in their block. Seal of water, ice, all the elements that the dragons represent. They and all have, have different colored stars to them yeah, too, right? You have to, yeah, they're all different colored stars. And you have to kill the corresponding dragon to open up the next pathway. So, uh, getting lost in the dragon's den is not really possible because you're only limited to so many areas. So, you're going to find your way to go, but there are still times where you still have to use party A to hit this switch so that party B can traverse through an area that party C may or may not even go to. Hate to see how someone has to use the toilets. Yeah. <laughs> And again, every time you find a save point, it's always a good idea to rendezvous back up you kill the dragon so that you don't have to keep doing all this shit again. And... Good night. Can I come in? You no. Can easily, yeah. No terrorist tent. <laughs> yeah. You keep... <laughs> night watch. <laughs> it's the no terror tent. Yeah. <laughs> and instead of... But the one terror level is replaced with Gogo mimicking Tara's face. Yeah. How peculiar. Alright. Yikes. Now this right here is a fucking rematch this is the red dragon folks and look i mean let it be known that if this fight's foreboding on the fact that this is one of those dragons you have to unlock in order to fight <laughs> you know he's behind a wooden door for a reason so, and it's all because of his gimmick the red dragon will as the text will say as the battle begin will begin sacrificing its life force to power itself up so what that means it's fucking invincible Nothing will hurt it. Nothing will phase it. Don't even think about it. And then your job is to simply survive. And it's going to lay the beat down with a lot of high-powered spells. Oh, can you runic some of this shit? You can runic a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can runic everything except, I think, Meteor. And Ultima. And ult no, you can, you can runic Ultima. Fucking hell, this guy's a joke. Yeah. But don't, don't get comfortable... You see, I little jumped the gun there. <laughs> I did runic. I was like, oh, let me put, let me cast haste on myself, and I had like less runic, but so less runic before Mog could cast the haste again. So that was a fucking wasted turn. So, a lot of red dragons' attacks are of the fire elemental. They still pack a wallop. So, yeah, yeah and red fang's just an outright kill. Yeah, a red fang instant death attack, which I think ignores uh, instant death immunity. So uh, I hate I hate when games do that shit. I do too. I really do too. I was like, why bother <laughs> with my yes to death immunity when the characters just outright ignore it? All right, so at this point now I'm panicking <laughs> because a uh, flare hit uh, Celeste before I got a chance to runic again for round two, and as you saw, that did about four thousand damage. Now, generally, a lot of people that play the Dragon's Den often go into the Dragon's Den with about. I would say level 70 through 80. I mean, I check a lot of Let's Plays on 6 that go through the advanced stuff, and they're all in their 70s and 80s, and I was like, okay, that's fine. You want to be prepared for that way. I think it's kind of overkill, to be honest. Hey, I did the VM Infinito at level 60. Yeah. And I, uh, this is the first time I ever did the Dragon's Den with levels this way, because the first time I ever did Dragon's Den, I think everyone was in their lower 70s. Uh, because I really like Dinosaur Force, and I was Meltdown? trying to get Force. Uh, so, no, that's Flare Star. Uh, ooh. Uh, he, he can do Meltdown, though. And Meltdown is pretty dangerous if you don't have any fire absorbing equipment on because that's like 5,000 plus. Of course. To every character. Defense ignorant to boot. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, I mean, this guy is sacrificing his life force to make himself super fucking powerful and he's invulnerable. Again, all you gotta do is survive. You'll know you're at the end of the fight when he does Ultima. Uh, and after he does Ultima, he'll do a single cast flare and that's it. All you gotta do is survive. But again, fucking Red Fang, man. That's why I was trying to get the, um, the Vanish stuff up. Because it is a physical attack that ignores death, but it's a physical attack. So, uh, the vanish that can ignore completely. Right. So but right. like I said before, it's still one of the fucking things I hate. Why? It feels like it really takes away from a strategy aspect of the game. Why bother trying to come to the battle prepared as well as you can and then have the boss go, fuck you, got mine. It feels like a very archaic way of incorporating challenge to a game that was designed 20 years ago. Right. Let's make them... Um, ignore the stuff that didn't work previously and i think uh, some other games did that other games do that too not just six well 10 also had that to an extent like wasn't there a boss that the megaton punch uh, yeah, megaton punch was instant death regardless of protection like death proof uh, uh what about stone proof wasn't there an enemy that ignored stone proof 
Um, or am I thinking of 10 2? You're thinking of 10 2. Yeah, you're thinking of 10 2. That's Chuck. Yeah. And I'm going to hate that fucking fight when we get to it. Yeah, but I, 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 I am of the same boat. I hate enemies that ignore immunities. I just hate it because it cheapens the whole thing from a strategical standpoint. Because yeah. it also limits your, like, capabilities. Right, because then it's like, okay, I can't fucking yeah. do that, so what's the point of coming prepared? I do like the idea of this fight, though. The fact that he's invulnerable and you just have to wait it out. That's a cool gimmick. Like I said, it's just the Red Fang bullshit. Other than that, he's just fine. Yeah. And the Red Fang can be mitigated if you got physical, if you got Vanish on. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's doing a lot of magical attacks anyway. It's probably wiping Vanish out. Okay, but there you go. He did Ultima, and he did Flare. And after that, he's he's out of life force. He's spent. And for this, do you believe you get Terra's Apocalypse? I believe so. Which is basically an inferior thing to the Illumina Lightbringer, especially considering that, one, it uses MP to attack for critical hits, which well, so is not if Terra's going to be doing, flinging magic around. Well, so does Lightbringer, to be fair. Lightbringer also uses critical MP for critical hits. But then again, they didn't, but then you still wonder the point. Why bother with the apocalypse? Well, with, one? with the with the uh, with the lightbringer, it was worth it because if you, did you get stat buffs did, all around. If, no, no, but if you also did the holy elemental attack that came with the sword attack, that's doing max damage. So you're you're essentially attacking twice. And well, apocalypse does not. I don't believe the apocalypse has that. No, it's just a strong sword attack. So again, lightbringer out trumps apocalypse. All right. And that's that for that one. Let's Who's next? Down. <laughs> what? Oh, by the way, uh, uh, at this point in time of recording, we are aware that the uh, the, the ste uh, Steam is getting Final Fantasy V. Fuck right. It's the iOS version. Fuck right. Uh, so, you know, and I, and I brought this up during um, Session 2 of the Earthbound live stream, that, and, and for those who are watching us, uh, know time and time again uh, through our Final Fantasy or RPG playthroughs that... It's it severely disappoints me that five and six never got the same PSP treatment that Final Fantasy four did or yeah. one or two or and uh, and all that because I just love the sprite quality of those. I looking back at five on the iOS, it looks like they were planning to do that but scrapped it somewhere in the middle because or next time you get a chance, returns. next time you get a chance on look at five iOS, the backgrounds and enemy sprites are fucking gorgeous in that version of the game. Really? It's the character sprites that bug me. Because they look like they didn't get the same attention to detail as the enemies did. But the, the, the yeah, the enemy sprites look just as good, if not better, than the sprite quality that one PSP did and four PSP did. Shit. Uh yeah, the character designs is just the only thing that bugs me. But other than that, like backgrounds, everything else, that looks just fine. So uh, I'm definitely getting five on Steam when it comes out uh, late September. Uh and with that said that probably means we're getting 6 on Steam, too. And that's most likely going to be the iOS version. Which, that bugs me, because that looks like it didn't get the same treatment as 5 iOS did when it came to battle sprites. Because it looks like they just took this sprite right here and just gave it a glossy finish. You so, know what it could be, though, also? I think maybe it's just like one of their general attitudes about how they treat certain versions of their games. Because Japan's usually the one that has to say on what they choose in terms of quality in that. Mm -hmm. And for Japan, 4 and 5 were some of their favorite games, where 6 was kind of like a letdown to them, so they don't give 6 as much attention, which is kind of a shame. Yeah, it's a damn shame. If, if, if that's true, that's a damn shame. I like to get the benefit of the doubt. I do but, too, but I'm kind of seeing a pattern here, dude. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's really weird because, you know, they already sort of like had the mentality of redesigning enemy sprites and other things from the ground up because... Uh, uh, Ultima Weapon, Six's Ultima Weapon, was a boss you can fight in Final Fantasy 1 right. PSP. And, you know, they gave the Atma Weapon sprite the same amount of detail and class as they did with every other enemy sprite. So, the work, the effort's there. It's just that for Six iOS, they decided, okay, we're gonna give, we're gonna revamp the backgrounds, but for everybody else, we're just gonna, you know, maybe increase the clarity just slightly, and then just give it a glossy finish to make it look HD, when in reality, it's, it's N nowhere near close. Right. And that that bugs me. But again, only for 6 iOS, because 5 iOS looks like they put the detail in for the enemies. And it looks great. And I can't I wait to show that version. I'm going to get that for my off. iOS. Yeah, I, 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 I can't wait to revisit 5 with those with those, with those those sexy-ass enemy sprites, because oh, they yeah. look so gorgeous. I wonder if they'll use the advanced version stuff. Yes, it is. Fuck right! It's the advanced version. I mean, at this point in time, you have no reason not to. Oh, yeah! Yeah, so... You can go fight your Omegas, Mark IIs, your Neo Shinryus, Enuo, 
the fucking Void Master himself. He's like a DJ when I put it that way. <laughs> Mix DJ, Master Enuo. DJ Void sounds like a really nasty thing you could say. Yeah, DJ Void. Yeah, why don't you go DJ your Void, you jerk off? <laughs> Drop the beat into nothingness. <laughs> Dragon Avis. Dragon Avis is a new encounter for the Dragon's Den. Fire, weakness, that's it. Okay, Again. same with the abandonment you fought a while back? Pretty much. Oh boy, Again. Whirlwind. Yeah, these encounters are nothing special. But the Whirlwind hurts for those that don't have immunity to win. Uh, I believe if Terra or Celeste is rocking the Minerva boost years, they're fine. Uh, Paladin shields, force armor, force shields. Those are the kind of armors you want to be rocking in the Dragon's Den. Anything that just ups your magic evasion, your magic defense, gives you immunity to certain spells or elements. That's the kind of shit you want. Hmm. Stuff like Genji helmets and Genji armor is not going to do much for you. Genji is only good for stat buffs, which helps to a degree, but in the overall grand scheme of things, it's elemental protection you want over there. Yeah, like if all the dragons were dirt dragons, then Genji equipment would be fine. But uh, no, that's not the case. Anyway, so now we're heading into the second major area of the Dragon's Den, and it's very much inspired by the innards of the Zone Eater. Where we There's the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where we recruited Gogo. And by that I mean there are treasure chests that we can hop on, and those fucking green douchebags that can knock you off the bridge are back. Why? I, I don't know. Maybe they found new work. <laughs> well, I imagine, I imagine the worm didn't pay well. I guess so. Or maybe this is where they originated from, and those unlucky few that got eaten by the Zone Eater were simply relocated. It's all going to make it the best out of your lot in life. I suppose so. Anyway, uh, Primeval Dragons... And the other thing that we killed, I think with the Vector uh, Lobos, or the Vector Libos, yeah. Lithos, those are from Kafka's Tower, so they're weak to ice, get them the, the one, two. Uh, magical Dragon is, uh, the Magic Dragons are new for this area. Again, all the extravagant looking enemies, that they're pink, green, and all that, those are the exclusive enemies. Uh, but they're nothing spectacular. They're the final mixes. Yeah, ex yeah that's exactly, exactly what they are. They're their final mixes for Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> Six should really get an HD remake, though. Something to really do it justice. I totally be down for that. Cause uh, even though the six advanced, or nine, the yeah, advanced. Well, I mean, everybody will like a nine uh, remake. Dude, they don't have. To, all they gotta do is a graphical upscaling, and people will fucking <laughs> shop money like Billio. I um, I think that we brought this up in the nine commentary for Brain Scratch, but nine is one of those where I am not super in need of a remake at the moment. Like seven remake intrigues me a lot because I'd like to see how they like to, to transform the nearly 20 year old game and how they are going to incorporate the compilation stuff in without as long as they leave out the everything, original mythos. As long as the only thing they ever need to take out of Dirge or Cerberus is Omega Weapon. That was the only interesting thing I think they ever did with it. But uh, that is why that intrigues me more. Nine though I think is perfectly fine as it is to be honest. I think that the sub characters could do with a little extra oomph. Yeah. But other than that they're fine. Hexa Dragon. Hexa Dragon, which I was, I, I, I think we were trying to run away from, but I was like, oh wait, this is a new encounter. <laughs> like, I didn't <laughs> fight this thing yet. But uh, I, did, I did it strictly to show off the fight, folks, because Hexa Dragon, again, not very spectacular, besides the purple and underbelly. I kind of like the, it's kind of a remnant, the color scheme is reminiscent of the design they have for uh, Final Fantasy VIII's Hexa Dragon. Looks like an alien kind of dragon. Pretty cool looking thing, though. Yeah, I see it, what you but mean. Except it's in, except its coloration is uh, blue with, black with a blue underbelly. Oh. Huh. You ever see what the Hexa Dragon looks like in 8? No, I have not. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Is it like a reskin of the like the Tyrannosaurus Rex? No. In fact, that's one good thing about Final Fantasy 8, you could say. Almost no recolors. Oh, so enemy variation is really good. Like yes and no, because they, remember, they, remember how they used like a scaling method for that game? Yeah. The enemies scale with it too, so the Glacial Eye you fight at level 1 could be fought at level 100. <laughs> well, it levels up too. It grinds for experience. It trains. It keeps up <laughs> doesn't need to draw, though. Huh? It doesn't need to draw, though. Right. Ugh. So well, then again, that's what card games are for. Yeah. <laughs> up until a certain point where I find it actually faster to draw the high-end magic from monsters than I do fucking playing cards for getting, like, six of them for ten holy stones. Fuck that shit. And then you, you brought the card game. I was like, I'm playing Magic the Hexa Dragons playing the card game. <laughs> I got a card refined, man. <laughs> You're removable, Tabisha. Yeah. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Random and plus. I win. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> this card game is ass. <laughs> this card game is a load of bollocks. Yeah. I'm going to make a new one. People will love it. With black jacket hookers. Yeah. 
<laughs> what, another card game? <laughs> I'm going to play a card game. I'll make it my own. I'm going to call it poker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway. So what are you bringing all three of the angels in here for? To rest up for the next part? Rest up for the next part. Yep. Well, not entirely sure. We're not done yet. Uh, so we're going to switch so, our party. Uh, Rome, so Rome and uh, Celeste had a sex change. Yeah. <laughs> I call it a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, we used the uh, little red star above the save point to switch our party members. Now I am rocking Charlie's Angels with... Uh, uh, I forgot who my third member was. It's most likely... Oh, no, you know what? It is? It's Mog. Because Molulu's Charm ignores random encounters. Thank fucking Christ. Mm. Uh, I want to. I don't want to run into any more random battles here because I just want to get through this area quick. Yeah, here they go. The green douchebags from the zoning are back and fuck off. Damn. All right. So, but unfortunately, falling Darn down. Died. Falling down from the green douchebags is nothing like falling down from the zone eater you get because hurt. there are encounters here, and as you can tell from the blue flames, uh, they're special little doohickeys. First up, ten people might know this one. It's the Earth Eater. So I recall it from Baba. Interesting. So, F Earth Eater is weak to Holy. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, every time you hit it with someone, it counterattacks with Megaton Punch. With That's its, instant its instant death, which ignores death immunity. So, if you want to make like this... That's like a fucking truck, though. Wait. You, yeah, it, 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 can, it, you, can you evade it with Phantom? Yes, you can. So you can, there but you can also cast Stop on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, cast Stop on it. You use Phantom. Whatever you want. Pick your poison. And Earth Eater goes down like a bitch. I got Mog with the Holy Lance on standby, and he's jumping with the Dragoon Boots and the Dragon Horn. And he, he still only jumped once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Dragon Horn is merely an accessory, not a tool for Makes Mog look cute. Yeah. <laughs> and Earth Eater goes down, no problem. Earth Eater. I hate, I hate Earth Eater fucker. in 10. I hate that fucker because he has Fortune Spheres. <laughs> I hate it because he has something I want. Yeah, and you need a whole fuck a lot of them. Same with the Greater Sphere. Oh, I hate that fucker more. It was always in that slug that gave me trouble. Yeah. I have no idea how the fuck I'm going to be doing that shit for the 10th playthrough. How we're going to be doing that for yeah, the 10th playthrough. Speaking of Nest Slug, we may just see him in this Let's Play. <laughs> Though nowhere near as annoying, so. Well, hopefully not. Uh, if the Nest Slug was anywhere near as annoying as he is in 10, I wouldn't be able to finish this fucking place. I hate that gimmick. I, I hate Nest Slug. Just <laughs> entirely. <laughs> You know, uh, not for nothing, though, like, they went out of their way to like, give him a unique, you know, graphic. He's not a recall of anything. But the thing is, though, is that I think the Nest Slug enemy was going to be used to the... We're really bad at this shit, because we got right into fucking time where we're talking about sex. Yeah. Let's start here. Marlboro Menace. This oh. is another thing, also, from the original Coliseums of Final Fantasy, um... Ten. This guy likes to divide. So, you... as soon as you kill one, you got two. Then when you kill two, you got four. Yep. And then after that, he gives up. And after that, yeah. After that, after four, he gives up. Likes to counterattack with Blaster. <laughs> yeah. He's like, fuck. Mog, you're not doing any favors, honey. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know. I, mean, I, I see, I see uh, abomination tentacles here, and I think, ah, he must be uh, he must be weak to holy. Actually, no. He absorbs holy. So yeah, He's a holy eater. Yeah, he's a holy. <laughs> yeah, fuck God. I eat him. <laughs> it's so delicious. Where's your gun now? All right, so Malboro Menace, you know, despite the name, and he's like he's nowhere near as bad as ten. Uh, and he, even after he divides, is has a devastating weakness. Right. Devastating weakness. He's not immune to death. He's not immune to instant death. He's not immune to instant death. So you can, uh, no matter how many times Malboro Menace multiplies, uh, uh, Cyan's level eight sword technique, Cleave, one shots him. All four? Yeah. Fuck right. One shot's a one four, but not even that. If you can use cleave as early as the first Marlboro Menace, instant kill doesn't split up. Wow, that's wow, Mister. That was useful. Yeah, so you don't have to deal with all four of the Marlboro Menace if you decide to use cleave automatically. I wanted to let the battle drag so I can show that the Marlboro splits up, but now nah, I don't want to deal with four. <laughs> so uh, I'm charging up to level eight cleave instant death attack, and then as soon as it happens, there you go. I love how the iOS fixed that. Oblivion! And there you go. And that so my friend is how you whack a weed. Yeah. <laughs> hey Mog, you gained a level! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> there was no one to land on. <laughs> I wonder if it stumbled in midair or whether it does a dance in midair. Yeah. 
Maximir. Oh yeah, I took the Molulu's charm off, so we got random encounters down here too. And some of them are pretty fucking nasty. Maximir is nothing special, but there's a there's a um, Dullahan recolor here that uh, I think it's called like, Arma Dar a Dullahan. Uh, f again, garish colors, but it also hurts because it, it like physically counters with spear, which does like 2,000 damage in the back row. Ow! So. Yeah, get get a uh, get Phantom up as soon as you can, and uh, the fight shouldn't be a problem. Maximir has only Stone Gaze to really counterattack with anything. If you got a ribbon on, it's not a problem. Uh, or Mog too bad didn't. nobody gave Mog that m memo. Well, look at it this way. You got another clump. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I always want to decorate my my uh, man cave with a Mog <laughs> statue. Too bad about the noises it kind of makes at night. It's screaming. I'm trying to sleep. Hmm, it's speaking to me. <laughs> Sora! So yeah, that wasn't the blue flame. <laughs> I thought it was. Okay. The okay, this is a pretty boring battle. The Abyss Another Worm. Another ten name monster. Yeah. The Abyss Worm is just the beefier warm enemy. That's it. It has beefier stats. That's it. This is not a very interesting fight. So It's colored like Meatloaf. Except it's, it's blue winner. <laughs> yeah, it's Meatloaf with teeth. <laughs> but the, its innards are blue. Like that pig that was in the news. Like that what? There's a somebody killed a pig somewhere out back, and when they peeled back its skin, it was blue innards. Blue? That's a fucking alien. Sounds like it. The what pig the hell was that? Are invading. Gravity bomb is a gravity based attack. Oh. <laughs> As his name would insinuate. Like I was paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> the science rocking it like it's 1997. <laughs> oh, now it's 2,134. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tara gives no shits. Tara gives just... no shits because uh, the Abyss Swarm. Again, rocking the higher defense, uh, also magic defense. So regular elemental spells are not going to do as much as you want them to. You're thinking maybe five, six thousand? Nah, maybe like two thousand. Ultima, on the other hand, gives no fucks about that. Uh, neither does Meteor or Flare. Nor Mog. Or nor Mog. Oh yeah, well, he likes to jump and all that shit. I think he <laughs> still has the Holy Lance. Have you ever used any of Mog's dances since you learned them all? No, because they're not very beneficial in this kind of situation. Mm. To my knowledge. Most of Mog's thing is, um, when you do one of his dances, it actually has a it actually has four possible effects that can trigger. Uh, talking about the um, what he does for dancing. Yeah. Each move has a certain fraction. Uh, what uh, what probability of how it happens? Oh shit, Sandstorm. Sand really? It looks like Sludge. <laughs> <laughs> Which oh. is weird because uh, Hoovers or Slagworms in the World of Ruin and the Overworld have. A that attack called Sandstorm, and that looks like a proper Sandstorm. Shockwave is a non-elemental attack with doesn't do much damage. At this stage of the game, it's only doing 300D. What a joke. Yeah. And these are, you know, despite the boss music playing in the background, despite them going out like bosses, they're only some of them barely technical, technical, uh, categorized with bosses. You know? But, you know, whatever. The best one is nothing special. They're sprite colors. They're, yeah, they're they're red colors. That's all they are. In fact, all of them here are sprite colors. Well, we're not done here. We got two more left to go, I believe, and I believe this one. That one's was the not dark it. Behemoth. Oh, it is it. Dark Behemoth. Uh, the Dark Behemoth. This one is not. Oh, finally, a friggin' monster that's not fought in the goddamn Ten Coliseum. No, but the uh, it's a similar thing. It has a uh, well, it has Mighty Guard, which you can immediately dispel. dispel. So which I would you recommend should. doing that. Well, first I'm going to get haste to go up on everybody because not everybody's rocking miracle shoes. I think only Celeste and Cyan have them on. I can see why Cyan would need it. Yeah, <laughs> okay, he's only rocking that Genji armor, man, and he's on the front row so that I can get the most out of his physical attacks. Because I'm at a point where I, I just I can't get away with using dispatch his level one sword technique. I think it'd be stronger just do his regular sword attack. Right. Uh, so there's that. Uh, Dark Behemoth, on the other hand, when he dies, can either cast Meteor or Ultima. And they will hurt. So that's why I'm getting re rays up just in case. Or you're just telling it to go fuck itself? Yeah. <laughs> ah! I yeah. block your horns. I block your I block your attack with my double swords despite the fact that I only have one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a double sword animation. I think it's just to represent blocked. No, I think it's two swords. Like catching the attack it with two swords. That would be a party then, like Yeah. With two swords, though, that's my point. <laughs> he only has one sword. Alright, so you just wasted healing magic because... 
because uh, you know a one character does this one character does this the other character does this pretty much a down pet set pattern and I don't want to break from the pattern because the moment I do now you know what it was I think I see what that sprite animation actually is it goes down their attack goes down like this your sword comes down like this forming that cross so the other sword represents the enemy right it's just that's not even a sword it's like a, it's like a slash right yeah well okay that, yeah I can definitely see it that way uh It'd be, and really, he it'd be is... really weird if it was a second sword. <laughs> Mark, he's dead! Again? <laughs> Why do you always kill him when I jump? You know what's really fitting? What's that? Umaro is a Mog is a baseball. <laughs> but I thought Mog was Umaro's boss. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that noise. Mog should be using Umaro as a baseball bat. And Umaro Certainly wouldn't worth know it. the difference. Anyway, so. so left? Uh, up there is the exit. Unfortunately, I kind of want past the other one, which is Gargantua, I'm gonna head back for him. Uh, after crystal I kill dragon. this crystal dragon. Again, garish fucking colors. <laughs> I like the coloration. Now, uh, what's it do? Nothing special. Nothing special. Nothing so special. What, kind of a, what kind of damage does it do? Nothing special. Ah! <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's, uh, out of the encounters that you can run down here, uh, the crystal dragon is kind of like the breather enemy, because uh, physical attacks, it can just uh, outright guard. Needle Breath is, you know, that's a pretty, uh, you know, outstanding physical attack. But that's about it, though. Hmm. It's kind of like a recall of the Blowfish. Uh, but it doesn't do set 1,000 damage. And, uh, eh, yeah, that's all she wrote. Again, so the one enemy that you're watching... At it. Yeah, the one enemy you're watching out for here is, like, the Arma Delahan. Uh, the recall of Delahan because of its, uh, its counterattacks. And, um... Tell me about yourself. Let's, talk, let's, let's look it up. Level 89, okay. Wow! Well, you're pretty up there. Not much on the HP, though. You're rocking a lot of MP, though. But that's it. You don't have any elemental weaknesses or anything of the like. So I'm just going to give you the stab stab. Oh, you don't like that, do you, bitch? <laughs> well, you really don't like that, do you, bitch? <laughs> no shit. But he really isn't, like you said. Or he really is, as you said, nothing special. Just blow him up. Yeah, just blow him up. I mean, you got the physical attacks, but they're, if they're in the back row, then you're not going to feel much of that. Uh, because Terra's got the high magic block and uh, evasion, so she's going to be blocking all that. Celeste pretty much goes to double. Mog has a snow muffler, which means his physical defense is through the fucking roof, so that's not going to do anything. Cyan, on the other hand, is only at risk because, again, Genji armor and all that. It's not really doing anything. Armo Ah, uh, here we go, the Armo Dullahan. Yikes! Yeah, this guy starts to battle off a level 5 death, so if anybody's in the multiples of 5, they're down and out before the battle even fucking begins. Kind of like Death Gaze in that regard. Death Gaze? Oh, sorry, Doom Gaze. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I combined Doom Gaze with Death Guys. That's what, that's what I did. <laughs> I do it too. So I'm getting everyone set up here with Vanish and Golem just in case because uh, I want to hit this guy to kill him, of course, but he always counters with that fucking spear attack, which again is 2,000 plus damage in the back row. So He also manages to have... um. He also manages, to, if he does roulette... To just plain not fucking die from his own magic. Yeah, I think he's immune to death. Fucking Blaster, man. Oh, good, good, that I missed. Yeah, it should be noted that Blaster is instant death if it hits. I think it's 50-50. So, if you don't outright block it, there's still a chance that the probability is in your favor. Fucking Spearman, at least twice in a row. Look at that, Shit. Golden just took 2,000 for me. What a trooper. <laughs> But his arm fell Meanwhile, off. Meanwhile, so. Mog just bailed. Yeah. Say, <laughs> like, fuck this. So look, at, look at the colors. Look how much damage he did. That was in the back row. Fuck's sake. He ain't one to be clowned. No. He looks like a clown. Look at his colors. <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy should be a boss. He doesn't get boss music. He just gets regular music. And it's always the fucking boss in Mook's clothing that does that. Which I hate. Like, I'm fighting a threat, but the music doesn't reflect that. Right? <laughs> uh, thankfully, uh, Mog has a snow muffler on, so the physical defense fucking laughs at Dullahan's uh, spear attack. But still, that fucking hurts. Les, how are you feeling, honey? Why did it uh, Why did it do less to Mog? Uh, because he has snow muffler. Again, it's a fire elemental attack? No, no, no. Snow muffler's physical defense gives you uh, nearly max physical defense. Oh, uh, okay. So a spear won't do much damage to you. Uh, if you got um, if you got an imp arm warrior with you, then um, he won't really care about Dullahan's... Uh, physical attacks either, but still, Jesus Christ. Alright, so the last encounter that I have yet to show up, because I kind of ran past the guy, <laughs> is Gargantua. And guess what? Nothing special. By the by, uh, whatchamacallit, this thing was actually named after a monster in Final Fantasy VIII. Really? What is... 
a giant fucking... Uh, Alright, here's the thing with Final Fantasy VIII Gargantua. There's a monster you fight called Vice Age, Lefty and Righty. Yeah. They take the appearance of a mummified monster in the ground. Gargantua is what happens when it comes out of the ground. Oh. I kind of like that idea. I do too. Like too bad he's it. nothing special. Yeah. Gar like Gargantua. It was really weird because Gargantua also has access to, I think... Throat punch? Like, um, no. Uh, nothing like that, but... He has access to high-level magical attacks, but the thing is, his magic stat is non-existent. Wow. So they don't do any... They, they do very, very low damage. Does he do a Ruppler? No. Doesn't do anything like that. Just a recolored big guy, and that's about it. So I figure it's a good time to show off Valor, one of the spells that we learned from Gilgamesh, which triples your physical attack for that one turn. So any character that was doing 2,000 is now suddenly doing 6,000. Is that all of them? Yeah, that's all. Even Nuslug? No, no, no. We're not done with the Dragon's Den just yet. This is only the area that, ha they, uh, that you go through should the green douche knock it down. Those are the special encounters exclusive to this area of the game. Do they come oh. back when you do? Yes, they do. So try not to fall down again. Uh, if you got Mog, though, use Molulu's Charm to ignore all the random encounters, but you still got to maneuver your way through some of the blue flames, which is impossible for, like, the Earth Eater and the, I want to say... Marble Menace. Mm. Uh, you, you can you can play the waiting game with the Dark Behemoth and them such because you can just wait in one spot and wait for them to move around. That's what I ended up doing because, uh, spoiler warning, I fell down again. <laughs> but I cut it past that part. Well, while Johnny gets himself out of that hole, we'll see you guys next week for part 35.